Media experts have warned that anyone who shares sexually explicit material of a person without their consent is guilty of distributing revenge porn and can be held liable for defamation or criminal injury. And this follows uh, this explicit uh, video, of course, of the Home Affairs Minister, as we've just seen. Well, let's chat now to uh, social media lawyer Emma Sandler uh, to get a little bit more about the legal aspects of this. Emma, thanks very much for joining us. Welcome to the program. Thank you, it's been a busy day. I guess, you know, when you started your practice, mm. you could not have foreseen mm. just how big this area would become and that, um, I guess, case law is mm. still being written even now. How to deal with uh, some of the things that we're seeing? Mm. Well, you know, we have one of the newest constitutions in the world, and even the drafters of our very recent constitution could not have foreseen that we'd be communicating in the way that we do now. You know, some of the law is established. We have laws around defamation, around privacy infringements, um, which would apply in this case. We don't yet have specific criminal laws around revenge pornography. So I've been working hard in Parliament, making some on those laws and we have them in draft format. Uh, we have the revenge uh, pornography criminal offence which is contained in the Cyber Crimes Bill and in the Films and Publications Amendment Bill and I'm hoping that those will be passed mm. quickly. And basically what will that, uh, that what will criminalise is any non-consensual distribution of private sexual uh, content, whether it's a photograph or a video, which I have to say is something that is just so common these days. I really think that sexting has become quite normal. Mm. We see it at teenage level. Uh, I think that also what needs to happen in a legislative change which is urgently required is to decriminalize consensual sexting between teens because at the moment the way the law deals with that content is if a teenager sends content to somebody else and they distribute that content without their consent then the person who created it is guilty of the right. crime of creation of child pornography and so we need to be able to combat that criminally. At the moment you can go and lay a criminal charge of crimin in urea. It's when somebody seriously infringes your dignity. It's a fairly generic criminal offence. It's the one that was used to uh, imprison Vicky Momberg earlier this year for racism. We saw Penny Sparrow guilty of criminal urea. It's not a specific law around revenge pornography. And we use this term, Peter, mm -hmm. colloquially revenge pornography. We should be using the term image-based violence because that is what this is. All right. So let's unpack and use this perhaps as an example. So I shoot myself in a video mm -hmm. and let's say I do send it to someone the person who receives it um, do you have to explicitly say listen it's just between you and I is it implied that um, it's just between you and I or can I, as the receiver of this, do whatever I want with it? Does title pass? Yeah, so I think that, uh, I think that where possible, we should have discussions around consent. And I, I have to tell you that I'm inundated in my practice with people phoning me who have been victims of uh, sextortion. Maybe somebody they met online, maybe they met on a dating site on Tinder or on Grindr, maybe they met on Instagram or on Facebook, even on LinkedIn. And they chat to this person, they start this online relationship, and that person solicits intimate content out of them, whether it's a nude photograph or a pornographic video. And then they turn around to that person and they say, we want you to pay us 5,000 Rand via e-wallet or we're going to put this online. We're going to create profiles using this picture. Um, we are going to send it to, you if you're married, your wife, if you are employed, to your boss, to your children who I'm following on Instagram. And people generally panic and they pay. Um, so, so this extortion around nude content is not a new phenomenon um, before the minister has come out and really raised awareness around this issue it is something that has been happening a lot I probably get five phone calls a day from victims of mm. what I call sextortion so you know I think that the rules around sexting have to be that we need to have a discussion around consent if I send you a nude um, then that does not mean you can send it to anyone else and of course that should be inherent but we're seeing magistrates courts sentencing people to adult life skills program you know maybe mm. what is common sense is not that common so I think that we need to discuss who we're sending it to um, uh, we need to have discussions around consent. We need to know who we're sending that content to, not just to somebody who we met on the internet. Um, I think because prevention is better than cure, where possible, make sure that you can't be identified from mm. content. So, for example, make sure your face and your private parts are not in the same photograph or in the same video, uh, which is, I think, really, sub you know, if the minister hadn't had his face in that video, then a lot of this reputational harm that has been caused wouldn't have been caused, even if that video was distributed. Mm. 
making sure birthmarks, tattoos, yeah. piercings are not in the video. Um, and that's the advice that I've started giving at children level, well, at teenage level, when I speak at schools, even though, you know, it's a criminal offense, we've got to become more practical in the advice that we're giving to people because the digital world has yeah. just transformed the way we communicate and we actually now need practical mm. skills for how, for how we're going to live in this digital world. And retweeting, again, mm. is republishing, isn't it? Absolutely. So you're just as guilty. Yeah, so, so actually it's not just retweeting. So, so we have this principle in our law called the chain of publication, which really it applies to all publication laws. Um, so it certainly would apply in a crimin and urea case, a serious infringement of dignity. And when the revenge porn laws are passed in South Africa, will apply in those cases as well. And simply what it means is that if you send me content which is illegal, maybe it's um, a racist meme, and I mm. press forward, I become responsible for the content, for the publication of that content. So if there is a privacy infringement and I think there's no question that the video that is being circulated on social media is a privacy infringement of Minister Gigaba. Um, the only times you're allowed to really infringe somebody's privacy is if there is consent, so you can publish those naked pictures of me, I give you permission, or if there's public benefit, which we should call public, they call it public interest, we should yeah. call public benefit. So if at the core of it there's something illegal happening, um, you know, then, then privacy can be infringed. And, and I'm reminded of the case that was brought on an urgent basis to the Johannesburg High Court last year, where a woman had sent a pornographic video of herself to the then Deputy President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, and mm -hmm. that was hacked in the lead up to the December conference last year in the Dirty Tricks campaign. And a media organization published that private video, the sexual video, on their website, and that woman was forced to rush off to court to get an urgent interdict to get that content removed. And the judge was absolutely clear in that case that, yes, you know, it might be interesting to the public, but there's no public benefit in consenting, no. consensual sexual activities between two consenting adults, even if it is extramarital. Well, there's one area that I think also needs to be explored a little bit, and uh, we often take for granted. So what we're seeing at the moment are private pictures being mm. sent privately. Let's assume you're in public now. You're at a nightclub. Mm. You drink too much mm. and your shirt falls of, off or something and you have one of your breasts exposed. Mm. Someone takes a picture, video. Mm. Is that still falling within uh, the privacy laws? Or yeah, so then it starts getting quite complicated. Mm. But in simple terms, if you can show that you have a reasonable expectation of privacy in a particular set of circumstances and somebody infringes it, then you can sue them. Um, it really just means, is this private? Now, if I'm in a public dancing and somebody takes a picture of me and I smile, then I'm almost consenting to the mm. content. If somebody takes a picture of me in an embarrassing and obscene situation, there's no, uh, there's no, uh, there's no public interest. You know, I think that there's no question there would be a privacy infringement there. And I think it's an important conversation for us to have now, especially in the lead up to the sort of the silly season, office parties, matric rage, where we have seen photos and videos of people behaving badly and getting drunk and, and that content landing up online. And I think that so much of it is learning to treat yourself like the celebrity that you've become. Because frankly, we're all celebrities in the digital age and our friends and our family and our colleagues and sometimes the general public are the paparazzi. It's not your friend's human right to take pictures of you in embarrassing and obscene situations. If you're doing something illegal, then there is a reason for your privacy to be infringed. But generally, if you say no, the answer is no. Yeah. And we also need to tell people out there that if somebody uploads content about you on social media, you can ask them to delete it. And the law is that they must delete it. It comes from a lovely case called H versus W in the Johannesburg High Court where Judge Willis says if somebody asks you to delete something about them on social media, you should delete it immediately unless there's this manifest public interest, evidence of illegal content or conduct. All right, Emma, we're going to have to leave it there. But I think this is a conversation we constantly need to have. And uh, we need to have as we're getting closer, as you say, to the silly season. We're going to see all sorts of things, I have no doubt. But thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.